First time I met Jackie Robinson was in Havana, Cuba, where they had spring training in 1947. We both were on the Montreal roster, and they trained with the Brooklyn Dodgers in Havana, Cuba that year. And they were training there because they felt that was a better place to train for Jackie Robinson than to train in the South. And I can't remember the incident exactly, except that we were in the same locker room, and I noticed that guys kind of shied away from him, and I just decided I'd make friends with him. And truly, it, it didn't occur to me what that would mean to answer that question now, all these years later. We had to drive, a bus, ride a bus into the stadium, uh, probably 20 minutes or so. Talked about family, and talked about our faith, and talked about the game, talked some about scripture and uh, got fairly well acquainted with him at that point. When Jackie was signed in 1947, he, he faced a number of challenges. One, of course, was being an African-American and whether he would be accepted by the, the ball players that way. The second challenge is whether, whether he could make the ball club and whether he talent-wise was capable of doing what he had done at Montreal, which was the most valuable player in the league and, and won, this, won the league championship. And the third, third thing was socially away from the ballpark, how he would handle the travel situations which were different then for African Americans. Mr. Ricky interviewed him in the season of 1945 when I was with the Dodgers. And the, the records show that he had an interview for three hours when there was no showing him off, it was in private. And those are the three things he talked about, whether he could handle that, can you handle that? And he said, I will. And of course he was challenged not to react to it and, and uh, to play as hard as he had and, and to deal with the other carefully. I think the first thing I was impressed with Jackie in that regard was the fact that when Mr. Ricky talked to him for three hours and told him all the challenges all the way from screaming at him to profanity by players and fans, that his reaction was, yes, I can handle it. That was the first thing. And, and beyond that, the fact that he, I'm told, did handle it. There was not a time that is recorded, at least, when he blew up with another player from another team or his own players. The expectation for Jackie was uh, that pitchers may be throwing at him. The first time that, that happened, he just ducked the pitch. And after being in a slump for a week and a half, the second time they did it, he got a base hit, a single. Next time at bat, he came to bat, they knocked him down again. And that time he hit a triple. So that was the end of being knocked down that day. To my mind, Jackie made a, a real sacrifice. That was when he was at the University of uh, California, Los Angeles, where he played four sports. And that's not done very often then or today. But, uh, but his dad left the family. And so the mother moved to the West Coast to be by other relatives. And she had a hard time with that. And Jackie was at UCLA doing very, very well in every respect. And he, he left school to work so that she could make a go of it out there, make, make the family expenses with others in the family like himself. To me, that was a large part of what he, who he was. I think that I saw in Jackie a, a spirit of humility and of sacrifice on several counts. Certainly when I saw him with his baseball as to how he treated other players and individuals like I was before we ever saw each other as, as uh, players on the field. And the way he handled his family situation where his father left the family. 
but all of it speaks to that spirit, which I believe comes from his Christian faith and trust in Christ for his life and for his walk, whether it be on the field or away from the field or with his family. Those things are examples to me of that love of Christ. Mm -hmm.